Hi and welcome to episode 6 of Fret Search. This is a slightly shorter episode than normal because we've had a few uh, trickier problems to solve recently. So let's jump in and have a look. Okay, first the easier of the two tasks. The thing with this problem was that all the fingering was given in the book and I asked you to see if you could come up with a better fingering okay so this is what's given in the book now that for me is a bit of a problem where you and the third comes across to the G because it says to use the third here wouldn't it be much better to simply put the fourth down there. To me that is a perfect example of why it's good to work out your own fingerings. It's so much easier. Okay so that's the first task. I told you it was easy. So this is the slightly more difficult problem. Now if I play this with the fingering that's written in the book, between each of the patterns, the changes, you'll hear a little, uh, a little gap. So have a listen. Now the reason for this is you've got the two and then the book is asking you to jump to there. And then jump again with three. That's a pretty tricky, tricky thing to do that with, you know, to play it legato. I'll try my best. about as good as I can do so the idea was to try and find a fingering that um, will allow you to play it legato and it's a pretty difficult thing to do so if you managed it well done or if you've got any different way to mine leave a message in the comments but um, this is how I, I approach it so first of all now after the top C's change to four and three and this releases two and one. Okay, so I'll play that again. You can hear how legato that is. Okay, so that's the first problem. is free here so rather than jump three across use two with a slight extension okay so the whole thing and once more the solution so let's have a look at next week's problems and the first of these is from one of the most famous studies there is which is Villa Lobos's study number one which if you haven't if you haven't looked at so far I really recommend you do it's a fantastic piece and basically it's the same right hand pattern throughout P I B I B M I A M A I M P I P I and it just repeats and the thing about it is you have to match the speed between P and I 
when you get to the top it's A and M so you really have to work it's really good for speed between A and M this study and basically you've got a chord sequence which you apply that pattern to Some players choose to play it so fast that the change between each of these chords has to be really quick. So your task for this week is to find a good fingering for the first four of these um, chords. And notice how each bar is repeated as well. Okay, so the harder task this week is slightly different in that I'm going to give you three different um, problems and I want with each problem I want you to find out where to use a hinge bar now if you don't know what hinge bar is I'll show you now now let's suppose we had an open D with an F above it and we had to go to a B flat with a D above it One has to do this. And there's no way of playing that legato. So the hinge bar comes into play here. So instead of playing one as you normally would, you play it with this part of the finger. And then when you want the B flat, all you have to do is roll it across like that with the D above it. Now that's what I call a hinge bar because you're hinging it like that in order to play the open D below. Sorry, it's a funny angle for me, but. So. That's nice and legato, you see. So I'm going to give you three problems now and I want you to find out the best place to use the hinge bar. Now the first of these um, problems is quite easy so maybe some of the uh, beginners or earlier players can have a go at it. It's from Segreras' uh, book 5 so it's quite an advanced um, study but this is an easier passage and it sounds like this. And just try to find the place where you might use the hinge bar to help you get onto that third position chord there. The second problem is from Rigondi's very difficult study number five. So find the uh, place where you would use the hinge bar there. So this one is from uh, Giuliani's 15th Opus 48 study and um, it sounds like this. Now actually there's uh, not many ways you could play that without using a hinge bar. So um, yeah, have a go at that one. So there's three problems to try and find a way of using the hinge bar. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next Friday.